Okay, so let's start with what happened on April 19th, 1775. Here's the story. So if you remember the last time we were together in class, you learned that in response to people in America holding the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, that the king was getting a double message from the colonies. He got a like a peaceful letter, a petition, right? From the Congress saying, hey, stop being a big meanie. And then he also hears that the colonies are going to start arming themselves. Remember, that was for defense though, right? He doesn't know that. And that they're sending aid to Massachusetts. So he sends a letter to the military governor of Boston. Here's a look at old Boston here, back in 1775. The military governor was a General Thomas Gage, a veteran of the French and Indian War many years before. He knew people in America better than, than most. If you remember one of the punishments of the Tea Party, which took place right here, was that uh, the Massachusetts Assembly was dissolved. They basically just were taken over by the British. They had no government anymore. They weren't allowed to meet and they had to have martial law when the military is, is going to rule things. So the letter goes to General Gage. Get out there and go out here in the countryside and show these people who they're really messing with. They've never really seen the British Army, a professional army. And they wanted to kind of just flex their muscles, you know, show their military might. Maybe that will scare these people. And so here's the deal. It's April 18th, 1775. The decision's made to go. Now, there's spies all over the place. Each side has spies everywhere. The British had loyalists who were Americans on their side. And there were people that were the British who truly were patriots. They, they kind of sided with the Americans. So, word gets out that something's coming. And in Boston, uh, they have this church it's called the Old North Church. It's still there. I've been in it. It's over in this area of Boston right here. Once they found out that the British were going to go by land, that was this way over what they called the Boston Neck. See, that's like a narrow piece of land right there. If they were going to go this way, a person was going to go in the Old North uh, Church and put one lamp in the window just for a moment. And that way, the, the patriots out here in the countryside knew the British Army was moving by land. If they were going to go by water, they were going to go by this very narrow route right here, get right across, get out, and get onto the road, because their objective was going to be for the British Concord, the city of Concord, about 20 miles away. They're going to march to it. Think about that, 20 miles to get there. They had heard that some of this aid had been sent from other places and there were some military weapons and supplies in Concord. They wanted to, to destroy it, okay? So, two lanterns go up in the Old North Church. It's learned that the, the British are going to move by water. This, they thought, would have slowed them down. Well, they end up going across that water. They got slowed down anyways. They got stuck in the mud out here. And they don't really get going to about midnight now, of April 19th, 1775. They go past Cambridge, and they begin the long march to Concord, many, many miles away. Meanwhile, you know part of this story, that once the people in Boston heard what was happening, all these riders went running out. Well, not running out, they were riding horses. The horses went running out. One of them, of course, is Paul Revere. Some of you know that story. But there were about 40 different riders that night. They went everywhere. They're like this way. They're up in this area. They're, they're riding everywhere. A couple of them, including Paul Revere, get stopped. A couple get captured. But the word gets out. And as British soldiers are moving through this countryside, slowly people out here in the countryside begin to realize something's up. Church bells start ringing, militiamen start organizing, and it's going to be a very interesting day. 
So let's get rid of this map. So there he goes. He goes Paul Revere. And you can kind of see they're moving their way up here. And then they reach probably about the time it's like morning where the sun is coming out. The first few hundred British soldiers reach Lexington. And when they get there, they see militiamen standing on their town's green. That, that green spot of grass in the middle of town. It's still there, by the way. Uh, I've had a chance to stand on it. And a couple of the buildings that were there that day are still around, too. Homes, Buckman's Tavern. And so what happens is a skirmish. The British basically just push these militiamen out of the way. You're going to see it in a moment with this video you're going to watch. And once they clear those guys out of there, they begin moving on toward Concord. They finally get there about noon, about midday. They've been marching for like 12 hours. It's been 20 miles. They've got to be exhausted. And when they get there, they see up by the Old North Bridge a large force of American militiamen, New England militiamen. And that force moves towards the British, and the fight is on at the Old North Bridge, and now you have uh, British soldiers uh, being killed as well. There were a few militiamen killed at Lexington earlier that morning. Now you got both sides, and the British realize they are in a spot. They gotta get out of there. And so they turn direction, and they begin that 20 mile march back to Boston. And it's a nightmare for them. It turns into what they call a runaway fight. Uh, they can see up on the hills, uh, they can see people coming running, running with <clears throat> muskets, riding horses. And everywhere there's a bend in the road, there will be people that are hiding behind homes, rocks, trees, anything shooting at the British. And several different skirmishes happen. It ends up that word gets back to Boston that the original soldiers that left, about a 700 or so, the British send a thousand more soldiers out to save them. And they, they find these guys on their way back at Lexington. That's where they meet up. Now you got about 1,700 British soldiers. But it's not enough. There's thousands of militiamen. And they're fighting them all along the way. Finally, they get to Cambridge. There's more Americans down here. So the decision's made to go to Charlestown. And that's where the British get on boats. Their Navy controls all of this. They're safe in Boston because of the Navy. And they get a ride over to Boston. And thus ended probably one of the longest days in the lives of these soldiers. Especially the British soldiers. That was 40 miles of marching. Half of it with people shooting at you trying to kill you. So the war starts. And we'll continue on for another eight years. Okay, let's get on to the next thing. You're going to watch the April morning video clip now of what happened on Lexington Green.